This is Math 1201 video 10. We are going to take a look at how to calculate determinants of upper and lower triangular matrices, diagonal matrices, and elementary matrices. We're going to start off this video lecture by taking a look at triangular matrices and diagonal matrices. Theorem 1 says if A happens to be upper or lower triangular, then the determinant of A is just equal to the product of all of the entries that are on the main diagonal of our triangular matrix. So here is an example of an upper and a lower triangular matrix. In case you've forgotten, um, an upper triangular matrix means that we have uh, zeros underneath the main diagonal. So in this case, B is an upper triangular matrix and the lower triangular matrix has zeros above the main diagonal. So in this case, A is called lower triangular. Now, let's take a look at A. What theorem 1 says is because we know A is a triangular matrix, we can calculate the determinant of A by multiplying the entries that are on the main diagonal. So all we have to do in this case is multiply the numbers 2 and 5, and we get that the determinant of A is equal to 10. If we do the same process for B, we know we can do this process because B is an upper triangular matrix. We would multiply the entries 4 times 0 times 1 times minus 1. So the determinant of B is going to be equal to 0. Now this theorem about upper and lower triangular matrices is going to lead us in a neat direction. It's going to tell us whether or not the determinant of a triangular matrix is equal to zero simply by looking at the main diagonal. So for example, matrix A, we know matrix A is going to be invertible because it does not have determinant equal to zero, but there also was not a zero on the main diagonal. For matrix B, however, there was a zero on the main diagonal and we end up with determinant zero. So this gives us a really nice theorem here. We know that if a triangular matrix has a zero on the main diagonal, the determinant is going to be equal to zero, and that triangular matrix is not going to be invertible. Next I'm going to flip over to diagonal matrices just for a few minutes. Because diagonal matrices are special cases of upper and lower triangular matrices, our two theorems that we've looked at already are going to apply. So remember that theorem number one says if we have an upper or a lower triangular matrix, then the determinant is just the product of the entries that are on the main diagonal. So in this case, our diagonal matrix is both upper and lower triangular. So in order to find the determinant of this matrix, we're going to take the product of these main diagonal entries. We're going to have one times two times minus four for a determinant of negative eight. Our theory also says that a diagonal matrix is going to have a determinant of zero provided that one of the entries on the main diagonal are equal to zero. So if we go ahead and actually multiply out these entries that are on the main diagonal, we have four times two times zero times negative one for an overall determinant of zero. So if there is a zero on the main diagonal, of a diagonal matrix, we know that that matrix is not going to be invertible. Now here's a handy little theorem you can use if you do happen to be working with diagonal matrices. Uh, what you want to do first is you want to scan the main diagonal, make sure there aren't any zeros on the main diagonal. This means that your matrix is going to be invertible. If you know your diagonal matrix is invertible, you can find the inverse of that diagonal matrix by taking reciprocals of all of the entries that happen to be on the main diagonal. So let's take a look at a quick example using a 3 by 3 matrix D. So in this case, I'm going to look at my diagonal matrix, scan along that main diagonal. I know that D is invertible because there is no zero along that main diagonal. How do we find the inverse of D? Well, it's just a matter of flipping these three numbers. 
So if we flip minus 1, we just end up with the same thing. If we flip 1 over 3, we end up with 3, and if we flip 2, we get 1 half. And I just fill in the rest of the other entries as 0. So it's pretty easy to find the inverse of a diagonal matrix. Okay, so let's take a look at determinants of elementary matrices. We're going to take a look at each type separately. First, let's take a look at a type 1 elementary matrix. Just to refresh your memory, a type 1 elementary matrix uh, represents multiplication by a non-zero number. So if your elementary matrix E represents the operation C times rho I, then the determinant of E is going to be equal to C. This one's probably the most confusing for me to write down into words. So let's take a look at an example to try to clarify uh, what I just talked about. So here we have an elementary matrix E. E represents the elementary row operation minus 2 times row 3. Now according to what we just wrote down, because this is our number C here, this minus 2, we're going to get determinant is equal to minus 2. Essentially what I want you to notice is that these types of elementary matrices are diagonal matrices. So all we have to do is multiply these three numbers to get the determinant of this elementary matrix. Now the next two types are great because they're pretty easy to remember. Type 2 is an addition of a multiple of one row to another row. So if your elementary matrix is of type 2, the determinant is always equal to 1. So again, here's another example just to clarify why this determinant is always equal to 1. So, our matrix E in this case represents the elementary row operation, row 1, plus 2 row 3's. And its determinant is equal to 1. Now these types of elementary matrices are always going to be either upper or lower triangular matrices. And we're allowed to use theorem number 1 again. So if we take a look at all of these entries that are on the main diagonal, they're always going to be equal to 1. So when we multiply these three out, we will get a determinant of 1. And lastly, we have a type 3 elementary matrix. This is when we interchange two rows. The determinant of a type 3 elementary matrix is always equal to minus 1. So here is an example of a type 3 elementary matrix that represents row 2 switched with row 3. Now you're just going to have to kind of go on blind faith and trust me here that the determinant of these kinds of matrices are always going to be equal to minus 1. 